Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I hope your Thanksgiving holiday was good because right after Thanksgiving, you and I know what comes up. We get to go to Aqueduct. The big A, Matt. I'm excited. I, I, I'm not going to make the trip out there this year, but uh, a big day of uh, post-Thanksgiving racing for sure. Four graded stakes, two for the Phillies, two for the Colts. We're going to Unfortunately, Matt, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play favorites. We're gonna stick with the males today, just because I think they might have a little bit more to talk about, and maybe to talk about looking forward, because we have certainly Kentucky Derby hopefuls in this Remsen. But we're gonna start with the Sakara Mile, Matt. Which uh, this is the most interesting betting race that I can remember for the Cigar Mile in years. Yeah, I agree, Brian. I I and on top of that, I. Don't know if I can think of a 12 horse field in the cigar mile in years. I see that Candace Curtis uh, went with S Senor Buscador as the uh, the horse to highlight there next to our morning line. The morning line at the track hasn't come out, and and it was a tough morning line to make, Matt. There there's a lot of horses to bet in here. There's a lot of horses that are hard to throw out here. Let's uh, let's start from the rail. And if we're starting from the rail, we have a horse who's won nine of his last 10 races, Matt, although all of those nine wins came at the same Charlestown racetrack. Yeah, yeah you, you got to love uh, Coastal Mission, uh, uh, a Charlestown specialist just uh, running over the fields down there, six wins in a row. Uh, um, I think it's like nine wins out of the last 10 uh, this horse is a sprinter. That's one of the things that I like about these big one-mile races around one turn. They bring together interesting fields where uh, many of the horses are more sprint-oriented, and then you've got another group of horses that are a little bit more longer distance oriented that's always makes handicapping these kinds the scar mile the met mile uh interesting but clearly uh, coastal mission is from the sprint group yeah although he has stretched out a little bit and and there are a few races in there where you'd say wow he's maybe good enough to contend in here i i, I worry more than anything that all of those wins are at charlestown in fact his only loss in his last 10 races came in the one race that wasn't at Charlestown. So it's a tough spot, but he should show speed, obviously in good form, coming from the rail. And, and that is a Jeff Runko uh, owned and trained horse. And people familiar with Charlestown know how well Jeff Runko does at Charlestown. Number two is the horse that we decided on as the favorite, although it could go another way, but ever so mis mischievous, Matt, is uh, a three-year-old that we haven't really talked about. Uh, much this year, but he's putting together a very strong record and he's coming off a pair of stakes wins for trainer Brad Cox. Yeah, and uh, Brad Cox, when you, you've got to think about three-year-olds uh, in the last couple of years, and here's here's yet another one, uh, not only two stakes races, but three wins in a row for Brad Cox. You mentioned three-year-old. This will be his first try against older horses. A really nice win in the 49er, grade two. Um, last time, a race that is got a couple of other runners from that uh, that sprint in this field. Uh, listed stakes win at Churchill Downs. Um, and uh, he did, though, had got those victories with close pace, pace pressing trips. Yeah, he's a horse that likes to stay pretty close to the pace, and there should be a pretty strong pace in here. Uh, we already mentioned the one. Now, ever so mischievous, uh, Matt, is uh, coming off a win, which probably is in the key race. That 49er was one mile at Aqueduct, and uh, several of the horses that figure to be bet here uh, are, uh, are involved. In fact, if we went back to that cover photo real quick, you can see the three of them right there, that's the winner for Brad Cox and not behind, uh, not far behind are both accredited and, uh, and uh, Dr. Dr. Ardito, the gray on the outside who is making up the most ground. So that, that will be a key race. We'll talk about the 49 or more, 
One horse not coming out of the 49er that figures to get bet a little bit is Senor Buscador. Senor Buscador is a horse that uh, I've liked. Probably we both liked Matt since he won the Remington Springboard Mile three years ago at Remington Park. I've always thought of him as a horse who likes to rally going a little bit shorter. Lately, he's coming out of nine and 10 for long grade one races where his rally hasn't quite gotten there. Yeah. Uh, from the barn of Todd Pletcher, <coughs> Senor Buscador is the classic example uh, of a uh, of a cutback in distance. Although it's not a big cutback in distance, you know he's been going a mile and an eighth. Uh, he went a mile and a quarter in the Pacific Classic, a mile and a sixteenth. But now cutting back <coughs> a mile and a one turn mile which is something that I think uh, you're really excited about uh, uh, for Senior Buscador. Um, hasn't had a win since July when he took the San Diego handicap. Yeah, the San Diego was the shortest race he's run. As you said, it was two turns, a mile and a 16th. But it's the shortest race he's run uh, recently. And, and since then, he's had 10 furlongs, 9 furlongs, 10 furlongs, all grade one. He rallied in all. Uh, like I said, though, that uh, maybe that big kick was a little bit uh, stunted, maybe a little bit by the quality of competition, but also I think uh, maybe a little bit longer distance than he's truly best at. So, yeah, one mile, one turn. He hasn't done one mile, one turn or any one turn race for over a year. And that came in a nice win at Churchill Downs in the ACAF last year. Uh, number four, Matt, let's get started with these Chad Brown horses. Uh, number four is Cat Case, and Cat Case is... Uh, very lightly raced. In fact, he's only had one race in the last year. Yeah, really uh, uh, lightly raced. So it's interesting that Chad has this horse in here. This is one, the first of three Chad Brown horses in this field. Three-year-old making only the fourth start of his career. He had been off for a year before running second recently in an allowance race at Aqueduct. His only win was in a maiden special race. Yeah, and, and the return race wasn't bad. And obviously, mm -hmm. Chad Brown must think pretty highly of him, a horse who's only won one out of three races. But he's run well in all three races. And as we said, that was a pretty strong return race when he was second last time. So marked improvement here maybe puts him in with a shot. Another Chad Brown that you certainly have to consider, Matt, uh, Dr. Ardito, uh, the gray that was running on the outside fast in the 49er. And Dr. Ardito is the New York bred uh, of the bunch. And off that race, you'd have to give him a big shot here. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, I think you have to give him a big shot considering, and we'll talk more about it, the fast pace that is anticipated in this year's Cigar Mile. Um, and and uh, Dr. Ardito, interesting horse, Brian, because early in his career, he won six races in a row. Uh, um going back to, I think, when he was a two-year-old after breaking uh, his maiden. Uh, um, since then, uh, his uh, record is not quite as impressive in terms of victories. But I think that that second-place finish in the 49er could be maybe the best one of his career. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with that. Here's a horse who's won 7 of 12. And uh, was really finishing fast in that 49er, three-way, I, I guess three of them were within half a length at the wire in the 49er. And he was certainly closing best of the bunch in there. And now he gets a, a pace that looks pretty fast. Here's the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. I can't even find Senor Buscador on this chart. He's so far back. But you see Dr. Ardito, the number five, along with High Oak, the number six, uh, very close to the back of the pack, as well as three technique who is a, uh, a confirmed rallier as well. But you see a lot of horses up front led by a horse we haven't talked about yet. P pipeline, uh, pipeline though, should be chased. And there it is, Coastal Mission, ever so mischievous. Uh, number eight, awfully cool. And e even three others are relatively close. So Timeform US says it's going to be a strong pace, which should make this a pretty fair race, at least uh, maybe it gives the ralliers a, a fighting chance one mile at Aqueduct, Matt. Uh, next horse on the list, I just mentioned him a little bit. Number six is High Oak. High Oak is a horse, Matt, who's 0 for 8 this year. He's got some back class for trainer Bill Mott. 
He's certainly rounding into better form, so I can see why they're taking a shot here. Last time he rallied in a uh, graded stakes sprinting. Yeah, another interesting horse. And, and you mentioned the uh, you mentioned the back class. Uh, High Oak won the first two races of his career as a two year old on debut, and then the Saratoga Special. Uh, had a, after that a couple of uh, layoffs. He then went to the hopeful, ran fourth, had a layoff, came back. Uh, ran in the fountain of youth and the wheel really came off then uh, because uh, uh, he was in that fountain of youth that had an incident in it and and High Oak uh, fell in that race and took a whole bunch of time off, I think close to a year, came back and, and didn't seem to be the same horse at all, maybe affected by that. Uh, a traumatic experience in the fountain of youth. Uh, um, as you mentioned, a whole bunch of starts since then, uh, but has been looking better, was second in the bull ruler at Aqueduct recently, which is a grade three. Yeah, yeah. High Oak uh, rounding into form at the very least. He's still a long shot in here, but back class rounding into form, you never know. Trainer Phil Mott. Another horse you never really know about for sure is Three Technique. Three Technique has been a horse who pops up, Matt. He likes to rally. And I, I think given a fast pace at a one-turn mile, it makes a lot of sense that this could be a race where Three Technique pops up coming off a pretty dull performance in the Breeders' Cup. But maybe this is a good spot for Three Technique. Yeah, and, and fans of Horse Center know that we've talked about this horse uh, on and off for years now. He began, another interesting story, Horse, he began his career uh, in the barn of Super Bowl winning coach Bill Parcells. And, and like Brian mentioned, won a couple of, uh, couple of nice races, but later in his career, he was... Uh, in a claiming race at Churchill Downs and was taken for $40,000 by the current connections and uh, trainer Jason Cook. Uh, um, I, I think uh, he certainly is as good as ever uh, as a, a, a five-year-old now and maybe uh, maybe better than ever since, since getting claimed. Recently, uh, he was a winner of the Nehru to grade two in New York, and they're going to ship back up uh, to see if they can get another win for three technique. And if he won the cigar mile, he'd be over a million in earnings. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few horses that could say that on Saturday and three technique being one of them uh, coming off an eighth place finish in the Breeders' Cup sprint where he never really did much. This is a different spot, though, an interesting spot for an interesting horse. Um, unfortunately, he's an internet in an outer. You never know for sure if you're going to get the best for three technique but when he does run his best he's very dangerous and this would seem like again a spot where he could pop up another three-year-old in the field number eight awfully cool should be a long shot matt uh certainly a cheaper horse than most of the field but his last race at parks was impressive enough to take a shot yeah i think that's the case uh to take a shot got that win at parks uh, earlier in the year in the summer he missed by a nose in the long branch at monmouth park uh he was a horse that broke his maiden in a claim and another horse similar i i guess in that he's uh looks a little cheaper on paper but is coming off a nice win that's the number nine castle chaos uh you see 20 to 1 there on our odds castle chaos coming out a nice win over the track as well yeah good solid allowance horse throughout his career brian uh trained by young trainer rob falcone jr um this is he's he's finding a pretty tough spot to make his first try in a stakes race yeah it, it is and and it's a tough spot for everybody uh, i think this would probably be the biggest win in any of these horses careers and i, I don't mean to put the field down because i think it is a nice overall field uh, but this is this would be a big win for everyone, and this is a tough field for everyone, including the number ten. A credit, uh, a credit could go off the favor here. Chad Brown, at Rad Ortiz Jr. Those familiar winning connections. He was actually the favorite in the Forty Nine er. Couldn't quite get the job done in between horses there. Went third, beaten just a half a length though. Uh, certainly lightly raced enough where you think he could move up off that good experience in the Forty Nine. 
yeah, couldn't quite get the job done. As you said, Brian, seems to be the story of Accredit's three tries in graded stakes. He has top three finishes in all of them, but hasn't broken through with a win. So as you said, this would be a big one for this Chad Brown one runner who does have two allowance wins and his maiden in his record. Yeah, and those three horses coming out of the 49er, ever so mischievous, and uh, uh, Dr. Ardito and Accredive, um, I think that him and, and the two horse are the two that should figure more into the early pace, while Dr. Ardito is the one that we would expect to rally of those three horses coming out of the race. Hoist the Gold is another one that you could expect to be somewhat near the lead, Matt. This is a hard hitting horse. Um, Hoist the Gold has run in a lot of stakes races, a lot of graded stakes races. He's won some nice races. He, he's another horse who could become a millionaire. And Hoist the Gold, like uh, uh, Three Technique, is coming straight out of the Breeders' Cup sprint. He was sixth in the field. Not a big surprise that he was uh, back off the, the winners a little bit. But just a, a nice horse who, who seems to be good at six, seven, eight furlongs, a horse you can't throw out here. Yeah, Brian, and, and I think they sent this horse to the – uh, to the Breeders' Cup uh, based on the race that he had before, which was a nice win in the grade two Phoenix at Churchill Downs. That kind of performance uh, uh, makes him just as good as anybody else in the field. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, graded six when two starts back. My, I, I don't think there's anybody else in the field that can say that. So always the gold. He, he always seems to have some odds. And like I said, six, seven, eight furlongs. He's got Probably more stakes experience than just about anybody in the field. Hoist the golden horse you can't throw out. Pipeline was once looked at as a promising horse. Now in the barn of Sherry DeVoe, uh, Pipeline has not won this year. Uh, but there's there's some talent he shows here and there. There's some speed he shows here and there. And Pipeline would be a horse who I would not be shocked if someday he came back with a big performance. I, I just don't know if this is the spot for him. Yeah, first start for... Uh, trainer Sherry DeVoe, who, of course, was an assistant for Chad Brown. And uh, DeVoe gets this horse from the barn of Chad Brown. Uh, 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 Pipeline uh, has uh, 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 the last time found the winner's circle in an allowance race that was at Aqueduct. He's been running in longer races for the most part. Yeah, including setting the pace in the Woodward. Uh, this could be another race where he's part of that pace. And as we said, we're expecting a pretty strong pace. All right, that's our early look at the SCAR. Let's go to the two-year-olds, Matt. And again, I think we have a very interesting field here for the Remsen, which is nine furlongs at Aqueduct. Gives the two-year-olds a chance to stretch out here to a distance. And we've got 10 horses here, Matt. And I, I think there's a number of interesting horses. Let's start with the two domestic product who is a son of practical joke. Chad Brown gets a lot of uh, uh, practical joke sons and daughters. And this is another one, Matt, who uh, after a so-so debut, it's got a nice win at the distance and at the track. Yeah. Uh, I think that it, it was not the performance that was expected in his first start. I think they felt this horse had a lot of promise, was bet pretty well as part of an entry that day, but I think this was the horse that uh, they were playing and came back with a nice four and a half length victory at Aqueduct. When we're setting the morning line, when we're setting our own morning line, we rarely, we rarely will have a nine to two favorite. And, and that speaks to the wide openness of this race. I don't know if that's a word wide openness, but anyway, Doorknock. Doorknock is, uh, he's got a famous full brother and he's coming off a nice win in his third start last time at Keeneland. He's the he's the morning line favorite on our chart, Matt. Nine to two. Yeah, and and Dornock was part of a crop of two year olds that Danny Gargan was uh, very excited about early in the summer before Saratoga opened. Um, Dornock, I think, took a little bit longer to break his maiden than they might have expected. Uh, tried it made in special way. Then he was second in the Sapling <laughs> at Monmouth Park um, and finally got his maiden special weight win in his third try, shipping down to Keeneland, winning by more than six lengths. 
Yeah, that was an impressive win, a mile and 16th, winning by six and a half lengths. And you could see him getting better with each start. Of course, his famous brother is Mage, a full brother to Mage, the son of good magic door knock. I don't think he's run a bad race yet. Second in a sloppy track at Saratoga. As you said, second, a pretty good second in the sapling at Monmouth. And then last time, even though he dropped down to Maiden Company, probably was his best race, yes, when he uh, yeah, when he absolutely rolled at Keeneland. Uh, as likely as anyone to be the favorite, but maybe the four is another horse who could buy for favoritism, Matt. His name is Moonlight. This horse is from Todd Fletcher. And there's Irat Ortiz. You always got to look out for Irat Ortiz. Interestingly, Matt, he started his career on turf. Yeah, uh, and anytime Irad's on a horse in New York, He's going to get bet heavily, couple him with Todd Pletcher uh, on Moonlight with a horse that had a second in uh, street sense at Churchill Downs. And that was a pretty good field uh, in that race. Before that, he broke his maiden special weight at Aqueduct, going a mile by nine lengths. Yeah, yeah, an, impre an impressive win in the second start, his first race on dirt. And then last time was sloppy, uh, a sloppy track in the street sense where he finished second. I think he'll need to do a little bit better than that second in the street sense to win this Remsen because I think it is a good field. But Moonlight, certainly a promising horse for trainer Todd Fletcher. And we're just going to keep going with these horses who are who are potentially very nice horses. And I think drum roll, please, would fit into that. Maybe you'll get a little bit more odds on drum roll, please, as, as opposed to the first, uh, the three horses we just mentioned. This is a son of hard spun, though, who is uh, trained by Brad Cox. And uh, after uh, uh, finishing sixth in the slop at Saratoga, he's run two good races, Matt. Uh, first, he was second to Locked, and we know what Locked has done since that maiden race. And then he came back with a nice maiden win over the track. Yeah, I think we will get better odds on drum roll, please, than we're used to getting on these uh, Brad Cox runners that he trains for Gold Square Stable that have had so much success recently, uh, particularly as three-year-olds with horses like Cyberknife. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. And, and again, they're talking about a fast pace. I, I wasn't sure if what I saw in the past performances uh, told me fast pace, but there's enough in here. You look at that gaggle of horses out front, uh, which includes a long shot, Le Dombro, the one. Includes Doorknock, the potential favorite, the three. Private Desire on the outside. There's a lot of horses uh, not far behind those three as well. So again, nine furlongs at Aqueduct. We're looking at a fast pace. Should be a fair race. Should give the opportunity for some ralliers. And you see some horses that we're going to talk about soon, a little bit farther off the pace. One of them including Moonlight, who we already talked about. But there's also a very, very expensive uh, uh, yearling purchase, Matt. Uh, his name is Sierra, Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, of course, is uh, uh, comes from the uh, barn of Chad Brown as well, like domestic product. And uh, Matt, uh, this son of Gunrunner went for $2.3 million as a yearling. Yeah, that's a big, big uh, uh, price, even uh, in, in today's world uh, of uh, yearling purchases. But it's a Gunrunner. Uh, Chad Brown has uh, has got the horse. He was, uh, you know, a, a really nice winner of his debut, which came at Aqueduct at a mile. So who knows how good this one is? Yeah, he was not pounded. Uh, surprisingly, two point three million dollar purchase uh, for Chainer Chad Brown. He's only three to one in that maiden, and and it was a. Uh, I don't want to say an overly impressive win. It was it was a, it was a nice win. Uh, he'll have to move forward, but certainly the son of Gunrunner would seem to have uh, oodles of potential to to move forward and an interesting horse probably that will get some play as well in here. Uh, we need a stakes winner, Matt, and, and here he is, number eight, Where's Chris? Uh, Where's Chris uh, was a little bit of surprise last time when he broke through with his stakes win, but uh, of course he comes from uh, Rick Dutro Jr.'s barn and he's won two or three nicely has done little wrong, has a stakes win over the track. There's a lot to like about where's Chris. There's a lot to like for sure, Brian. And and is there a hotter trainer in the country right now than Rick Dutro Jr. on his uh, comeback uh, uh, campaign? Uh, 
He is winning at Aqueduct at the current meeting at a 30% clip. Yeah, Dutro is uh, fresh off a Breeders' Cup Classic win as well, Matt. And where's Chris could be a potential star for a trainer, Rick Dutro. And again, I, I, I don't expect, even though he's the, <coughs> excuse me, the recent stakes winner over the track, I, I don't think he'll be real low in here. I think there's some horses that could get bet below the national winner. So an interesting horse in where's Chris. Copper Tax is pretty interesting as well. Uh, Dale Capiano has uh, has a horse going well. Uh, Delaware Park mainly. This horse has won a bunch in a row. He's he's won stakes races. He's also got speed. And uh, Copper Tax, a horse you can't throw out. And then and then the horses that worst Chris beat uh, in the uh, in the Remsen Private Desire, the ten. Uh, Bilal, the the six, uh, probably horses that potentially could move forward. Maybe that six. Trainer Bill Mott uh, has a horse who can move forward off his first stakes experience. Yeah, and and, and uh, that rounds out a really nice field of ten, Brian. Yeah, the Remsen is a good field. I'm excited, actually, Matt, for both of these races uh, from a betting standpoint. You know, there's no uh, champions in either race, probably. And we don't know that about the Remsen yet, but a lot of potential Kentucky Derby horses and, and good betting races, especially that 12 horse cigar mile so without further ado matt let's get to our top picks in these two races i'd like you to go first we'll do the cigar mile first cigar mile okay brian uh i am going to go with uh dr ardito um from the barn of chad brown um, <coughs> the a horse who could be the third highest price from the trio from chad brown but regardless is not going to be a real short price that we often have to deal with when betting on Brown's horses. I really liked his run in the 49er. He's going to get the right kind of pace set up. He's got a fantastic career record at the mile with five wins from eight starts. Well, you hit on the horse that I didn't pick because I think that Dr. Ardito was the horse that I considered as my other option for top pick. And and I, I, like you, am going with, uh, uh, I think, the same thought of this is a race where you can rally uh, with a lot of speed in this race. And I think it sets up well for horses rallying. Dr. Ardito is certainly a big threat off that big rally in the 49er where he just missed by half length. But give me the class of the race. Senor Buscador is a horse I've liked for a while. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's getting back to a mile. And I'm glad he's getting back to a mile with a strong pace because I think I think this is what he loves to do. I expect him to come flying down the lane. Senor Buscador. Uh, the top two picks, by the way, as far as the favorites, uh, we're not on either one. So hopefully we have some decent odds on the on the pair, Matt. In the Remsen, I see we're on different horses as well. Nine furlongs, another wide open race. Who's your top pick? I'm going to go with Where's Chris? Uh, um, nothing like with these young horses having a really nice run and a victory over the track, which this Rick Dutro horse did. Yeah, Moonlight for me, Pletcher. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried that he could even be the favorite with our Rad Ortiz Jr. off. But then again, the favorite in this race really should have some nice odds. Uh, I think your horse will have good odds. Moonlight, I really like his first dirt race where he just rolled. And then last time he caught a sloppy track, but he still ran well enough to think that he can move forward here stretching out to nine furlongs. Moonlight uh, is uh, a son of Audible, who's a pretty young sire, and I want to see where Audibles go. I could have picked a bunch in here, Matt, but I went with Moonlight as my top pick. All right, that's our show. We also have, of course, the Gopher Wand uh, and the Demoiselle, uh, which are basically female versions of, of the Cigar Mile and the Remsen. So a great card at Aqueduct, Matt. Uh, I'm expecting you to be out there. I am going to be out there, Brian. Uh, supposed to be a relatively nice day for December in New York with temperatures in the uh, mid to upper 50s uh, with a, maybe a break between uh, rainy days on Friday and Sunday. So uh, if you're out there, uh, say hello. Good luck, Matt. I hope you win. I'll be uh, I'll be at home playing here in Kentucky. Great uh, day of racing at Aqueduct, folks. We hope you enjoy it. 
Uh, we'll be back next week, of course, with another Horse Center. But until then, I want to thank you all for watching. Go ahead and uh, turn on those notifications. If you haven't yet subscribed, do that to our Horse Racing Nation channel. Also want to thank Candace Curtis for the great race graphics she provides, Timeform US for the pace projections they provide, and of course, our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Thanks for all you do, Matt. I'll see you in a week right here on Horse Center. Until then, everyone, good luck at the races.